Hello, this is not a spring chicken. Did you know that Obama proposes another $1 trillion in spending? And well, let's just say the market responds. Well, can I just say, are we all in? Well, for now, we're going to bring old Kim on with comments on the headline of today. And one million urged to evacuate as typhoon nears Japan. Oh, well, yeah. Well, because Japan is actually, well, um, it's an island and it basically sets in the world with both gut awful weather. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pleasant to live in some parts in Japan and other parts are really god awful horrible to live in. And it's, it's a country with two, it's always been a country with more people than it could support. Does Obama get the message? Well, no, I mean, <laughs> this way we have to bear the market out. Uh, no matter how many people tell Obama you have to stop spending, this morning he proposed rejiggering the entire education system because we have too many students in too crowded of classes with not enough teachers to teach them. So he proposed a new crash program to hire teachers and to build new classrooms because he said it will put millions of people to work. They already told him, the Democrats said, you're not going to get, an, they're not going to get the half trillion he wants. And he wants another trillion dollars on top of that. And his left is starting to flee like the, he got the plague. They're, they are, they're seriously talking uh, somebody to run against him. And they said, uh, uh, and this, is what, this is what one of them did say, I can go to Chicago, I can pick somebody off a gravestone and run that person, and that person can beat this president now for the Democratic nomination. They don't want him. I mean, He's gonna, they, he screwed things up with Israel, he screwed things up in the Middle East, so much for having a Muslim as a president. That, that's not going to happen again. Mm -hmm. And IMF, the world economy, enters a dangerous new phase. Well, there, okay, uh, this is what Obama doesn't want because Strauss, who's basically probably going to be the next president of, uh, of the uh, France because the French people are really pissed off about Sarkozy, spending them into bankruptcy, said, he said there is nothing wrong with the economy of this world that the removal of Barack Obama has, actually he said Barack Hussein Obama as President of the United States. Mm -hmm. An Obama re-election campaign defends the President's record on Israel. He <laughs> have no defense. You know, he basically, uh, you know, we, we supply massive amounts of money to the Palestinians and they basically said screw you. Uh, we, we supplied all the money you could think of to, you know, all these countries that are falling to fundamentalist Muslims in the Middle East. And we're, we're on the verge of losing Turkey, folks. Turkey, which was forbidden by constitutional law of becoming a Muslim republic, is getting ready to abandon the principles of Ataturk who created the modern world of Turkey. They said the people in Europe basically is not going to become part of the European Union. It's basically going to be shut off. And then these, these clowns are getting ready to start a war in Cyprus again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, Cyprus is not a Turkey's island. It is part of Greece and always has been. An ex-NPR news press, a player in the Juan Williams scandal named editor at Senator. Yeah. At that, Center. Isn't that something that they, uh, okay, first of all, Juan Williams is an Obama butt kisser. You don't want an Obama butt kisser fired from public broadcasting. You know, he didn't break any laws. He just said that he was worried. You know, he said he was, a, you know, just like everyone else. Every time you see a Muslim male get on an airplane, it worries you. It doesn't mean, he said that, he said it doesn't mean you're racist or bigoted. You just wonder since you can't, he said, since you cannot trust any of them on either side. And he said either side. Mm -hmm. The ones that support us you can't trust. And catastrophic Joplin tornado offers lessons on storm. Well, yeah, they didn't pay any attention to the warnings. They also didn't build, it's a tornado built, and they built, you know, uh, okay, um, my, my family has some, a home in a place called Popular Bluff. Popular Bluff actually was, uh, Matt was one of the largest cities in the state of Missouri. A tornado swept through the area because it was in a tornado belt and it became one of the smallest cities because they just simply didn't rebuild in the area. Ooh. They didn't pay any attention. They knew you were building structures that could not, because we put it this way, the Midwest, they put lots and lots of manufactured homes up in the Midwest because they're cheap and easy to move in. They do not like tornadoes. But it, it, you can basically 
anchor them into the ground so the home doesn't fly off when the wind hits it. But they won't do it because, well, it can cost you $5,000. Also, you can know you can put a manufactured home on a foundation and then you can sell it as if it was a real house. So for like $25,000, you take your $50,000 manufactured home and make it into a two or $300,000 home. That seems like a pretty good deal. They don't do it. Um, an analyst review Netflix is split. Oh, it's a disaster. This morning they're talking on the news. They, uh, they don't think Netflix is going to be recovered. They said it was bad enough what they did. And then they come back with the apology saying, you know, they told, they expect to lose 600,000 customers because of the higher rates. But you have to, first of all, my mother was in business for a long time before I lost her. She used to tell me, anytime somebody says to her, you have to understand, she immediately walks out on them. The guy from Netflix opened his up. You know, our subscribers have to understand that we are paying a higher fee, and they have to understand that that has to come somewhere, and they have to understand we have to raise the rates. Um, they rose the rates by so high that it collapsed the business. They lost they lost 60% of their work, and it's, and it's falling, so. Yep. An officer shoots and wounds a person at border crossing. Yeah, but that... Um, They'll go to jail for it. Doesn't make any difference. The, the Obama administration persecutes people working for the INS. Does as well as. And Iran, Iran's Ahmadinejad, two planes couldn't bring the towers down. He's absolutely right. It is a total impossibility, but it's not an impossible. But my my family has been building since they came to California in 1910. I can guarantee you that a structure built properly can take an airplane hit, folks, because anybody, uh, if you're old enough like I am, you know about the famous uh, World War II bomber that ran into the Empire State Building. You know what it did? Mm -mm. It damaged the floor, it hit the floor above, the floor beneath it, but it didn't bring the building down. It was filled full of, because it was a World War II plane, and guess what was aboard that plane? What? It was fully loaded going to war. You know, it had as much, it was, it was basically, by that standards, it was, it was full of fuel to go over to the war area. Uh, and all its equipment was on board. It was fully rigged to defend itself going over the ocean. It blew a hole in the side of the building. But what happens is, you know, I'll say it, everybody won't say it, the damn things were built substandard. Mm -hmm. And they hit the building, when they hit the building, the flames went down the elevator chutes, the flames melted everything because there was nothing it, it, you know, when you build something to code, it's never going to happen. But, you know, but those were built a long time ago. Yeah. Anybody remember the movie Towering Inferno? When you yeah. know, to uh, you have uh, William Holden to um, to Steve McQueen. You know, we we built everything to code. Period. Everything was built to code. But then Steve McQueen said, unfortunately, the code was wrong. Wow. And that was you know. So they didn't cut corners. They built it to code. But code does not code. There was no code for a building higher than a fire and than a, than the ladders can go. They, that actually has changed since the days of the Towering Inferno. They actually put, uh, you know, why didn't the sprinklers come on and put out the fire in that building like it was supposed to according to law? And hotel company disputes sixteen dollar muffins. I know they're all wanting. I mean, everybody wants to see what a sixteen dollar. Okay, have you ever seen a ten thousand dollar hammer? Have you ever seen a $600 screw, you know, a $1,000 washer? This is how the government does business. I'm telling you, this is BS. You know, this is bear the market. So, so you mean those $16 muffins are pretty reasonable? Yeah, but bear the market will tell you, Obama has announced that we are going to go into bulk buying to cut costs. And then, and then you know, because bear the market, he, he's not like little Rex. He can take it... Uh, you mean in, instead of paying individually ten thousand dollars for a hammer, we're now going to buy uh, a hundred and forty-four hammers at ten thousand dollars a piece? And they said, "Well, no, we're going to bring the price down. Oh, uh, nine thousand dollars a hammer. Uh -huh. We're going to bring the price down. Do you know they're not saying we're going to get them for ten dollars like you can go into a store and do it, but we're going to bring the price down. Mm -hmm. They won't tell you how much." And a Monty Bubbleism from Monty Bubbleism from the Mark Twain of the Animal Kingdom. Okay, that um, while the mind may be willing when you get to be my age, the body will continue to tell you, "Don't do that anymore." 